The 2024 bull run is going to be the biggest wealth creation opportunity of the decade. And if you want to be a part of it, come to the right place. In this guide, I'm going to lay out the roadmap on how to get rich in the 2024 bull run, the strategies to spot the right coins, tips on building a perfectly balanced portfolio, and my insider techniques to maximize your gains while minimizing risk. The first step to crushing the next bull run is to understand the game you're playing. Crypto is a game. It's got its own rules, its own language, its own rhythms and cycles. Most people stumble into crypto blind, throwing darts and hoping something sticks. That's a recipe for disaster. The winners are those who study the past to predict the future. Crypto bull markets tend to move in four year cycles tied to an event called the Bitcoin halving. This is when the supply of new Bitcoins getting introduced is cut in half. Less supply with steady demand means prices go up. The last halving in 2020 kicked off a bull run from the pandemic crash. Bitcoin went from 8K to 69K, Ethereum went from $200 to $4,800, and many altcoins pulled 50X, 100X, or even more. Fortunes and millionaires were born out of the last bull run. Fast forward to the present. We're coming up on the next Bitcoin halving. For the first time, we've seen Bitcoin hit a new all-time high before for a halving event, $73,000. This can be largely attributed to the US Securities and Exchange Commission or the SEC decision to approve spot exchange traded funds or ETFs for Bitcoin. Big institutions like BlackRock, Fidelity and Wisdom Tree are now channeling billions into Bitcoin. The excitement surrounding these developments combined with the expectation of higher highs is driving Bitcoin well higher before anyone expected. But I want to remind you that it's important to develop a long-term perspective. While Bitcoin still has room to grow, it's not realistic or sustainable for it to continue shooting up to the moon and beyond in the short term. The real opportunity for life-changing gains lies in the altcoins that have yet to have their day in the sun. I am not saying to avoid Bitcoin entirely. In fact, I recommend that everyone should accumulate at least 0.01 Bitcoin for the long term. One one hundredth of a Bitcoin. Bitcoin is an emerging asset that will likely continue to appreciate over time, outpacing traditional investments like gold and the stock market. Rather than letting your money depreciate in fiat currencies like the US dollar, parking a portion of your net worth in Bitcoin and Ethereum is a smart play. They may not 100x overnight, but they offer an asymmetric bet on the future of finance and technology. The key is to build up this position slowly over time, not to go all in at the top of a hype cycle. Steadily accumulating Bitcoin should be a cornerstone of your crypto portfolio, but it's not where you're going to find those 1000% gains in this bull run. The other key factor to understand about crypto cycles is that they're fractal, meaning that the whole market moves somewhat in unison. Individual coins take turns popping and pumping. It typically starts with Bitcoin breaking out first, then large cap altcoins like Ethereum play catch up. Finally, the mid caps, the small caps, then everything else. You have to be nimble and adapt your approach as the bull run evolves. You can't just marry a coin and hold it till you're rich. Real wealth is made by cycling your profits from leaders to laggards as they take turns running. This is easier said than done which is why you need a system. It's not just Bitcoin that's going to benefit from the halving. Ethereum and countless other altcoins are ready to ride the bull market wave. Altcoins are any and every cryptocurrency except for Bitcoin. As Bitcoin's price climbs, it creates a ripple effect across the entire cryptocurrency market, pushing up the value of altcoins too. This is the phase where prices of altcoins outperform Bitcoin. Bitcoin usually attracts the most attention as it climbs higher for about 18 weeks after breaking its previous all-time high, which already happened, then it's alt season. Here's how to find out if alt season is coming. The first step is that Bitcoin's price goes up and then starts to stall and go sideways for one to two weeks, losing attention from new traders and investors. Remember, Bitcoin is not likely to pull a 10x or even a 5x. Traders and investors start buying altcoins, which have been neglected while Bitcoin has been pumping. As more traders and investors move away from Bitcoin, altcoins start pumping and head towards newer highs. Keep in mind though that some altcoins can and will outperform Bitcoin even when BTC is pumping higher. Just look at Solana. It doesn't show any signs of slowing down anytime soon. AI tokens like Render have already made massive gains since Bitcoin has started its climb to 70k. Even new meme coins like Boom can pull a 20x after just being listed. But remember, in alt season, things will pump and dump fast. It'll seem like anything you buy will go up and it'll feel like 
everyone's a genius, but the real geniuses will be the ones that actually walk away with profit. And that depends solely on when and how you sell. I purposely shared Solana, Render, and Boom with you to highlight the fact that crypto has narratives. A crypto narrative is simply a theme that involves a category which all coins can then be grouped into. For example, Solana and Ethereum are both layer one coins, which offer a unique ecosystem for other altcoins to be built upon and stored. Bitcoin is actually a layer one coin. Now you know. So don't underestimate the power of narratives in crypto. Back in 2020, thanks to Elon Musk, Dogecoin saw a massive rally over 1000% over the course of just a few weeks. After Doge made its rocket trip to the moon, suddenly other doggy coins popped up like Shib, Floki and Elon, all of these also pumped. Why? Market psychology and expectations. Because crypto is still a tiny market compared to the New York Stock Exchange, Forex markets, and the bond market, that means that crypto is highly volatile and highly emotional, which makes for unexpected price action for better for worse. All it takes for a coin to moon is getting people to see it, buy it, and share their gains with others. Once moon coin hits 1000% profit, don't be surprised if star coin starts rallying alongside rocket and Mars. Savvy investors are paying attention to narratives, which means you should too. But just because one coin in a narrative is pumping 1000% does not guarantee that another similar coin will do the same. This is why it's incredibly important to make a plan on how much you're going to invest before buying anything. Which brings us to our next point. Warren Buffett said, diversification may preserve wealth, but concentration builds wealth. Since our goal is for us to get rich in the 2024 bull run, we need to carefully consider how we're allocating our funds to maximize gains. And the best way to do that is by spending some time on portfolio allocation. This doesn't sound sexy, but taking the time to plan this out can literally be the deciding factor on whether or not you actually walk away from this bull run rich. So pay attention. First off, understand that there are no rules to portfolio allocation, only guidelines. It's okay to break the rules here, but within reason. Each of you has to decide on an investment strategy that fits your own risk tolerance. Some of you have larger accounts and wild swings might make you sick to your stomach on the way to higher highs. Others of you with smaller accounts are complete degens that will ape into anything in hopes of turning 10 bucks into 10,000. Let's try to meet somewhere in the middle. We don't want to be ultra conservative, but we definitely can't be irresponsible and bet everything on red. Here's what I propose if you really want to get rich in this bull run. 30% stable coins. Don't flinch here. I have a really good reason for this. Keep listening. 10% Bitcoin, 10% Ethereum, 20% meme coins, 20% on AI coins, and 10% for new listings. By the way, a stable coin refers to cryptocurrencies that are pegged to the US dollar or other fiat currencies, but typically the US dollar. Here's the truth from a crypto trader since December 2017, the previous market top. Yep, I was that guy, a dummy then, but a genius now. You want to keep about 30% of your portfolio in stable coins so that you can buy more of your favorite coins on every dip that will happen. Crypto markets don't go up and to the right forever. In 2020's bull run, we saw Bitcoin make several negative 20% plus pullbacks. Even though each of these was after a new all-time high, these pullbacks still wrecked a lot of investors and traders, specifically leveraged traders. The reason I keep 30% in stable coins is to be prepared for the next pullback because it's inevitable. If I have no stable coins left, then I can't buy any more on dips, greatly reducing my ability to grow my portfolio on an uptrend. Even though Bitcoin and Ethereum are less likely to move up 500% this market, they're still worth holding to buoy your portfolio like stablecoins. If Bitcoin has a 10% pullback, expect every other alt in your portfolio to overreact to a multiple factor. Now that we have 50% allocated in stables, Bitcoin and Ethereum, that leaves 50% to play with. For those of you that have a higher risk tolerance, you can reduce the Bitcoin and Ethereum allocations, but don't skimp on the stable coins. With the remaining 50%, we want to put 20% into two narratives that are likely to be hot this year, meme coins and AI coins. I can't tell you exactly what to buy, but I can highly recommend two tools to maximize your profit potential, CoinGecko and the Trending Breakout Indicator, or the TBO. CoinGecko has this fantastic feature that automatically categorizes categorizes tokens and coins into narratives or categories. When you go to coingecko.com, there 
are these different options here. But here at categories, we can actually scroll down and we can see layer one tokens and coins. But if we scroll down just a bit more, we can see lots of other ones. Notice we have meme and we also have AI coins. This list changes all the time and we can see how each coin is performing over time as well. Note that it's ranked by the coins with the highest market cap. So Dogecoin is at the very top, but just because it's at the top doesn't mean it's the best one to pick for your portfolio. It just depends on what kind of risk tolerance you have. And note that some of these are still new. Book of Meme literally just launched this past week. So we don't even have a seven day performance history of this chart. Same thing with Slurf. As you go further down the list, understand that things start to get really sketchy because the lower the market cap, the riskier it is. I don't think I have to really explain that in depth and detail. There's a significant difference because when we look at a lot of these coins here that are categorized under artificial intelligence or AI coins, these ones are a lot more stable. Coins right now at the top of the list are Render, BitTensor, Fetch AI, Singularity, IOS, Ocean Protocol, Arkham. These are all coins that a lot of people are excited about because AI is hot this year in 2020. For. But understand that narratives can change, but at least these two can get you started. Lastly, we should keep 10% of our portfolio available to buy new listings. This is incredibly risky since new listings have no prior price action, meaning that they could drop like a stone or pump like a rocket to the moon. But the chances of alts pumping get higher after Bitcoin hits the Goldilocks zone after mooning then stabilize. Here's just a couple of new listings that pumped like crazy in 2020. One more important thing, the exchange matters big time. My exchange of choice when focusing on new listings is Coinbase. I know, unlikely choice. But the truth is that Coinbase has the lion's share of trading volume for US-based traders and investors. And like it or not, the United States has the biggest share of on-exchange trading volume compared to other countries. It makes sense to focus our funds on coins that are newly listed on Coinbase. Now that you get the idea of portfolio allocation, let's talk about taking profits. Yeah. Remember, your goal is to get rich. That means you're going to have to sell at some point to realize profit because it's not profit until you sell some. As prices explode higher, you'll be surprised to hear that it's actually more difficult to sit on your hands when your portfolio is bursting at the seams with juicy green profits. If you don't make the time to create a trading plan before you build your portfolio. I love using Fibonacci retracement drawings to plot out higher price targets and predictions, especially with new listings that have no prior market history. If your chart has more price action history, look to start taking profits about 30% below the previous all time high. I personally like to sell 10% of my position after reaching 100% profit. This allows me to recoup 20% of my initial investment while leaving plenty of coins left to ride the chart higher. Set alerts after you buy. Make sure to sell some when those alerts get triggered. I am literally speaking from experience when I say that I missed out on lots of profit in the 2020 bull run by not following my training plan. I got greedy and I thought prices would go way higher. So I didn't take profits on some positions and I did on others, but the ones that I really should have taken profits on, I didn't and I paid for it after the market started to crash. Lastly, if the market is still bullish and you're hitting your take profit targets, you can consider rotating profits into other coins in your portfolio that haven't peaked yet. This is riskier given that you might be a bit too greedy. Rotate profits into a coin you think is gonna move higher only to watch it fall. This is why I take profit in stable coins. I would rather buy back into positions after a pullback instead of watch my portfolio sag. Now that you have an idea of how to spot the right coins and build a balanced portfolio, let's talk about different trading strategies based on your time availability. If you're a more active trader with the time to closely monitor the markets and you wanna make a good living with trading, you have a few options. Swing trading. This involves riding the waves of volatility on the four hour and the daily charts and even the weekly timeframes. You're looking to capture larger moves over a period of days or even weeks. The TBO indicator that I mentioned before is a fantastic tool for timing entries and exits on these swings. Scalping. This is a high intensity strategy where you're making dozens of trades per day, trying to skim a few percent off each move. It requires laser focus and quick reflex but the payoff can be substantial. Just be prepared for the mental and emotional toll though. It's not for everyone. AB trading. This is a specific technique primarily for traders with smaller accounts that capitalize on 
thin order books and low volume charts to build an account quickly using three different methods, aftershock pumps, fat finger fishing, and channel trading. If you don't have the time or desire to actively trade, you're not out of luck. Some of the most successful crypto investors take a more passive approach. DCA bots automate the process of dollar cost averaging, buying a fixed amount of a coin at regular intervals, regardless of price action. This is a great way to build a position over time without having to constantly monitor the markets and automatically take profit on any bounces in the chart, either in stable coins, or you can choose to accumulate more of the coins and tokens you're interested in. You can actually accumulate tokens with DCA bots. Grid bots create a grid of buy and sell orders at regular intervals above and below the current price. As the price oscillates up and down, the bot automatically buys low and sells high, pocketing the difference. To be honest, this works best in sideways markets, which we're definitely not in right now. But we will be again at some point in the future, so it's worth keeping in your back pocket. The beauty of these bot strategies is that they take emotion out of the equation. You set your parameters, you let the bot do its work, freeing up your time and your mental bandwidth. You don't have to choose just one approach. Many successful crypto investors and traders use a combination of active and passive strategies, allocating a portion of their portfolio to each. The key is to find the balance that works for your lifestyle, goals, and risk tolerance. Remember, there's no one size fits all approach. The best strategy is the one you can stick to consistently over time. Whether that's actively trading the volatility or passively accumulating with bots, the principles of sound risk management and emotional discipline still apply. You've assembled your portfolio skeleton, a basket of large, medium, and small cap coins to ride the bull run waves. But now you need a plan of attack to accumulate your positions without getting wrecked. One of the classic strategies is just to market buy a full position all at once. When the market's shooting up, you might get away with it, but more often than not, you're gonna get hit with a pullback right after you buy, and then you're stuck holding heavy bags while you pray for a recovery. The smarter play is to scale into positions over time. This has a few key benefits. You get a better average entry price buying dips and catching bottoms. You avoid buying the top and getting dumped on by whales. You can react to market conditions and adjust your allocations as needed. And you mitigate the psychological stress of going all in and being underwater right away. My favorite way to do this is with the TBO indicator. The TBO is a trading view indicator that simplifies trading by showing the strength of a trend, when it could reverse, and where support and resistance levels are right on the chart. The TBO excels at gauging the strength of the trend and showing when an explosive price breakout could happen next. Sounds simple, right? But there's a bit more to it. With the TBO, I'm looking for a very specific setup, what I call the TBO springboard bounce. Here's how it works. After the price has moved above the TBO cloud, it's likely to return to the first moving average line of the TBO, and that's what we call the fast line. We place our buy order just above the TBO fast line and get a beautiful pullback entry into a chart that already has a confirmed strong trend. The best part about this technique is that it excels during pullbacks when the market's fearful when most traders and investors are afraid to buy coins that they already missed out on. While this approach works like a charm across all time frames, it works best on the daily time frame. Keep in mind though that the time frame should also dictate how long it might take for the chart to bounce back higher. The daily time frame might take five to seven days, whereas the five minute time frame might take 30 to 45 minutes. The profit potential is also dependent on the time frame. Slower time frames like the daily could net 20 to 30 percent, whereas faster time frames like the five minute could only be a couple of percent. The fractal nature of markets means these setups repeat over and over again. Of course, there are other tools you can use for accumulation, like Fibonacci retracements, Bollinger Band squeezes, or even just buying the dips on big news. But for my money, nothing beats the TBO for a high probability, low risk entry. I spend about 10 times more planning my exits than my entries. Why? Because it doesn't matter how much of a genius you are at picking winners. If you don't sell at the right time, you won't realize those gains. The sin of crypto trading is getting married to a coin and thinking you'll hold it until you can buy a Lambo. That leads to watching your paper gains evaporate in every correction. Instead, you need a systematic approach on taking profits on the way up. One that locks in gains while still keeping you exposed to the upside. My mantra for this is that I'm going to protect my portfolio at all costs. This means that if my trades and profit, I'm going to take profit on the way up and move my stop loss into the profit zone when necessary. Your primary goal as a trader should be to protect your portfolio at all costs. My favorite method is using the TBO indicator. Here's how it works. The TBO close long alerts on the daily time frame 
let me know before the trend changes that I might want to consider taking some profits off the table. You can see it right here in action on Bitcoin. So back here in early January, you could see that we had a blue dot right there. That is a TBO close long. And that lets us know that we might want to take some profits off the table because there is a correction coming. Just because we get these blue dots, though, it does not mean that the trend is over and we're going to zero. The beauty of this is that after we get our open long signal right there on the TBO on the daily time frame, it's 55% gain all the way up to our first close long. This enables us to lock in a lot of profits. And just in case the price actually falls further, it's telling you, you just made 55% profit. You should consider taking some profits here. So the price does go up a lot higher, but if you're not taking profits on the way up, you're missing the whole point of this. The second way is when the price dips in the TBO cloud, which is a sign of weakness in the trend. You can see it here on the chart for Ethereum. Not only do we have a TBO close long right here and right here, the price does shoot up, but man, it falls right into the cloud, which is a sign of weakness and what we call consolidation. Sideways price action, not fun. Essentially, it's just chop. The third way is admittedly one of the easiest ways, and that's just using simple support and resistance lines that are automatically drawn by the TBO indicator. Look at this chart for Solana. This is the weekly time frame, and as Solana was ripping higher and higher and higher, it moved all the way up here to about $200. But guess where resistance was on the weekly time frame? Right here at $231. There was a warning sign flashing right there on the weekly time frame with the TBO saying there's resistance right here. You might want to be taking some profits as the price gets closer and closer to it. The beauty of this approach is that it takes advantage of the powerful FOMO driven moves in crypto without letting yourself and your unrealized profits get swept away with it. By the time you're taking profits, you've locked in a big chunk of your gains and you're playing with the house's money. If the price keeps grinding higher, you can let the rest of your position ride or even add back on the dip. But if we see a sharp correction, you're not giving back all your gains because you took profit on the way up. This system takes the emotion out of selling. You're not trying to call the top. You're just reacting to the signals that the TBO and the market is giving you. Trust me, your portfolio and your sanity will thank you. If you're a complete beginner, click on this video to learn how I would start trading if I were to start from scratch. And until the next time, you know what to do. Stay awesome and stay in the green. Peace.